I passed Sour Berlin, just shoot me a message. Just give me a call and be like, hey, this is the KGB. Uh, <laughs> 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 this gave me like a call. And I was like so confused. Your funding from like undisclosed sources, no? No, no, no. Only from their big tobacco company. <laughs> Keep smoking. <laughs> yeah. Keep smoking, yes. <laughs> by, by spending time with you, it also gave me kind of idea that I thought German people would be more like moles, you know? Like more positive, more enthusiastic, more... <laughs> we need to navigate within the boundaries of society sometimes, so you know, we also can be as, I was like, crazy and as wild and as energetic as in Malaysia and just talking to you guys like also gives me like all the energy because... You know, <laughs> Did you get the notification recording in progress? Yeah, yeah. Did. <laughs> it already started by the way, so... Yeah. Mo, we were just kidding. We were actually recording this whole conversation from the start and all the shit, all the racist shit you've said since the start of this conversation, it's all recorded. You, you told me it should be authentic and I was and I can blackmail me. So go ahead. Good luck with it. I, I, got, I got material on YouTube, bro. You just don't know this. Keep, keeping true to the German reputation. Sorry. Okay, no. enough inappropriate jokes. Let's start with the uh, introductions to our audience. So this is my very good friend, Moritz. He is a German, and he is our friend from Malaysia. Mo, how are you? Hey, guys. Pleasure seeing all of you. Yes, German, but apparently not watching the football game. Thanks, someone for pointing <laughs> it out and for keeping me updated about the scores. I have faith in you. Got to keep me updated, and uh, this means that I'm staying like longer than, than the overtime. Guys, I'm good. Thanks for hosting me today. I'm, uh, I'm excited. I don't know which episode it is by now, but I think the OG boys, they have put together... Some, some pretty remarkable episodes and I'm thankful that this one is carried out in English because my Bangla is not really on fleek and, and I mean uh, it's not really suitable the vocab I can, can share so yeah thanks for thanks for having me guys also nice seeing seeing all of you here I mean we always had like a, a chat a conversation shop we've been seeing you last time I think last year in Paris around the same time I mean, yeah. yeah you stayed over at my house for five days um, I couldn't really say no but uh, <laughs> but <laughs> When you asked if you could, what what would I do? No, but I'm kidding, bro. It was really it was really nice to have you. And the, the the interesting thing about me and Mo for for our audience is that, you know, we we and Arman and Uda we we met in Malaysia when we were all in undergrad, and Mo came to Malaysia as an exchange student. And after that, we we sort of uh, you know you you went back and then you came back again in Malaysia and then we went to Europe and throughout this whole time we stay we stayed um we stayed in touch so that that was well, that's the best bit that despite the distance we were still able to stay in touch and be friends and you know hang out and go to trips together and stay in each other's place so that that's the best bit about this so yeah. th- very warm welcome to you Mo. Yeah, uh, like I remember like the first time I I think I got introduced to Mo like. When we were in a New Year's Eve party in Kuala Lumpur, do you guys remember? Like, <laughs> we were One a party of the parties, yes. Yeah, we party. got a stuck at the uh, elevator. <laughs> elevator. Of course, yeah. I could have not, man. One of the most remarkable New Year's Eve ever. Yeah, 20, 20 floors somewhere there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we got a stuck in an elevator during the countdown. So, yeah, it we, was great. Stuck in the elevator. And then there, were, there was a couple in the elevator who. Who just uh, started making out? I think that was uh, I started. Yeah, the other line, line, I think. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. yeah. <laughs> Ar- Arman knows Caroline. Arman, do you remember? Caroline? <laughs> yeah, of course, I do. <laughs> yeah, you she know all African of them. Guy, all think, right? She was with an African guy, I think, uh, for a guy from Tanzania or no, no, he was from Madagascar. Madagascar. Yeah, yeah. I, I shall, I shall not comment on this, but yeah, maybe you guys, you guys know you've been there, <laughs> but not to our audience. Yeah, it's really like special, like meeting you back then. I think you were. I mean, most of the exchange students, and this shouldn't sound lofty or arrogant by any by any by any means, but I was actually really glad to be friends with like international students, but like full term students. You know, you guys were all pursuing a bachelor degree. We were just there for one semester, took a couple of classes, but our attention was mainly shifted to you know <laughs> cultural diversity, exchange parties. I mean, I don't need to hide the fact, and unfortunately, you guys also joined in a few times. And uh, I still remember when I met Shafi back then. I mean, you you ditched your like homework to to go to like a night market, and then they saw you again in Malaysia when you just got the admission to Sons Po and the Rasmus Mandos <laughs> program, and you were like waving the waving the pros and cons where you where, where you could go, and now you graduate with honors from Sons Po, so everything fell into place, and I'm really glad we maintained the contact and got to see each other for every now and then. So I can yeah, also, you know, I mean, in all honesty, I didn't I didn't ditch my homework 
to go and spend time with you in the night market there was this very cute filipino girl who i kind of like just <laughs> you know they were putting smart us shopping come on at least once so this whole time i've been telling you yeah bro like that's the that was the start of our friendship but what actually happened was that this filipino girl was also there i was like okay maybe this might be a chance to spend more time with her So it's since, since I'm already here and we have, I think, like a couple of like followers. When Shafi guys say it's bros before hoes, it's never genuine. It might be genuine no. with me and all the others, but this this guy also in Berlin trip, he's uh, he has a different <laughs> no, but, agenda. Yeah, but no, but bros before hoes. I mean, no, I mean it's. I say I didn't mean it when I said it to you first, but then over time, you it, it became for you, bro. It's always bros before hoes. Other otherwise, and it's probably not the same. in other cases but it over time ta- we used to go to the diplomatic party you know <laughs> and that's important that was really something to remember right mo yeah that's how our diplomatic career started i think we were <laughs> we kind of we were kind of like born to to become diplomats at one point i think it really enthused me i was like developed enthusiasm to to become a diplomat one day now we almost there so let's see what's you know what's what's happening down the line but Yeah, these were remarkable evenings in Malaysia. And ever since, you know, I don't know what you guys, I mean, you made, now we're on the same time zone, which is spectacular and fascinating because then we were studying Malaysia. Now we are all here in Germany and then Paris for that matter. And um, I've been always thinking to transition back to Asia. I just haven't found the, the means to do so and the, the mm-hmm. right opportunity. But I don't know about you guys, but down the line, I may think of, you know, going back to Southeast Asia. Yeah, but that that's the interesting thing, Mo. Like you, you being a German, despite, I'm sure like you will never have a lack of opportunities in in Europe. But for some reason, you're very interested in in Southeast Asia or Asia. You know, you you always want to look for job opportunities <laughs> there. Is there is there a particular reason there? Like for any, like I mean, do you see a potential in Asia in terms of economic growth or like the people or or what? I don't I don't I don't know what this guy in the in the in the, in the bottom left always like has like. smile like he, he's very like a shenanigan smile i don't know maybe he has he has something to say about when you say you want to transition back to southeast asia and this guy instantly had to smile so i think he he's implying something and i want to no, no, i'm not applying anything i just you know it's, it's you know reminding me a lot of things so so like for particular reason it could be anything right so you yeah, feel free to answer no problem the, at all the whole spectrum the whole spectrum it is i mean this more gas board of options which you got but you pointed it out pretty well shafi like it's a, it's it's a, it's a vibrant hub there's like the population like 650 million there's economic potential mm-hmm. we talk about all these like deep levers from from china decoupling so yeah you know like this business opportunity is happening in asia it's it's it's, it's vibrant the, the standard of living is pretty high i Had a good time there. I mean, just you know, should not be chasing the past so much and like keep looking ahead. I and mean, we always different, you know. I can't compare. Exactly. You know, we're living in the in the past, and we're not. Yeah, not no, like for sure. And I think I think we're... all three of us, ever since we came to Europe, all we've been thinking. I mean, now it's not the case in for me anymore. But we, uh, we, Uday also remember you always talked about going back to Malaysia. Oh, Malaysia was so great. I still do. I I really loved living there. Actually, I don't I don't think like Europe is a very good fit for me. <laughs> like, uh, I don't. like maybe i don't cope up with german standard yet maybe because like here we always talk about efficiency like efficiency <laughs> timeliness and all those things like there is no t- time for chill you know like so in malaysia like i could say like you know you can just take a grab and go somewhere and like uh, go for an island for chill somewhere so it was more uh, like easy life back then but then again uh, like in europe uh, i can say like uh, you can travel to any country uh, any time like uh, the border is actually no border so like you just get a car or you just get a flix train ticket and go to any country so that's pretty cool about it and uh, i want to ask you more like why did you choose Anything. like malaysia specifically like what was so special about it Honestly, I gotta admit, though, it was never my, meant to be my first choice. Actually, you know, I, I mean, I studied Southeast Asian studies, like focus on economics and political science, and uh, I want to go to Indonesia initially to uh, talk to Carter. And we only had like vacancy of like three, like eligible students, like three students were eligible to go there, but uh, I didn't qualify for for particular reasons. I don't know why my grades were fairly. Okay, I was like part of this uh, extra curricular extra curricular group on on Southeast Asia, Asia. So I was always pretty engaged, like South Southeast Asia, like you know, 
at um, promoting like the culture, working with the embassies and whatnot. So, but I, I, I couldn't I couldn't secure a spot, and then I got my second priority, which was University of Malaya. And then in hindsight, in retrospective, it was probably like the best thing that could have happened because talking to my friends that went to Dr. Carter, they like there was like a rather small university. There was not so much like happening in terms of uh, you know when you compare it to be have, to be an exchange student in, uh, in Malaysia. So. It was really a blessing and a gift to not have gotten your first priority. And I think this is like, also when you like make an inference here that sometimes, and I don't want to be sounding like as a link, like LinkedIn influencer, <laughs> but sometimes like rejections, you know, they maybe offer like new pathways. And yeah, support, yeah, yeah. So. Sure, sure. of course, it's like when you get rejected by a girl and you start going to the gym. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean. <laughs> It's not a good good comparison, but I get what you mean. You know, you at first you probably were like a bit upset with not getting the position, not getting the spot in Indonesia, but to a new experience in Malaysia, and it turned out great, right? It even turned out better than it would have in in Indonesia, and that's exactly. that's an important lesson here. Like you know, sometimes the second choice might be and might might end up being the better choice for you in the end. So that's that that. That's a good point. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here, guys. Being <laughs> in this podcast with you, like most importantly, yeah, exactly. just uh, just a short <laughs> reminder, you know. And you also, you know, but like by, by spending time with you, also gave me kind of idea that I thought German people would be more like most, you know, like more positive, <laughs> more enthusiastic, more. <laughs> but oh. I, know, I got a very different experience <laughs> after coming here. No, but okay, more. Let's like address this okay issue, right? I mean, Arman and Uday are talking very stereotypically. Uh, we, I mean, when we saw you and we were like, okay, I mean, Mo as a German guy is amazing and super friendly, super easy to talk to, and whatever. But then that is very, very much in contrast to you know the the the, the German reality. German stereotype, not <laughs> reality, whatever. But then the German stereotype is wrong. People mm-hmm. are a bit more um you know serious or a bit more professional or like more work oriented you know like there's not much of an idea of work life balance it's all about efficiency it's not more, so much chill what do you think about that stereotype is it would you think it's true or it's like you know what where do you what do you think about it yeah first and foremost thanks for the compliments guys you know you don't necessarily need to say that just because we were on tape and i'm on this podcast so <laughs> no, this no, 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 like, no, no we are you know, stating the fact original talk <laughs> So essentially, it's it's my bad. So you guys had the, uh, the idea and apparently had a good reputation back in Malaysia as like an open-minded extra. And you'd be like, yeah, I want to meet more people like this. And then you met like Kara and Christina who were like amazing human beings. And you were like, yeah. So it's a, it's a great sample set. So the whole population of Germany will, will be pretty much like that. But I got to say that here in Germany, we also function a little differently because we have this, uh, we need to navigate within the boundaries of society sometimes. So, you know, we also can be, as I was like crazy and as wild and as energetic as in Malaysia. And I'm just talking to you guys, like also gives me like all the energy because, you know, I have these amazing memories and uh, we were just, you know, young and we sometimes felt, we were extremely privileged um, to say that. And uh, sometimes also untouchable to some extent. And of course, like here it's, it's way different because we have to also, you know, adjust and uh, here the society is conveying or expecting that you, you know, follow like a certain role and that you, you know, um, keep working. So there, there's certainly that. And I mean, I do see that also in my, my like personal surroundings and my, uh, see my relatives, workplaces and like people I talk to when they share their stories. So there is a, as a matter of fact, things here are way different than you might have perceived before. So yeah, there's a lot of bureaucracy. There's uh, sometimes, you know, the it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, sometimes it can be like really frustrating. I mean, you guys might know that like the foreign office, I was accompanying so many of my South Asian friends to to go to the to the foreign office in order to translate for them. And, you know, they were putting up so many hurdles, making it so difficult mm. for them. It was so difficult to find an appointment, first of all, to get a residence permit. So they, they really put a lot of obstacle, obstacles in the way. And yeah, I'm sorry for you guys to that you, you know, have to make this experience. But I mean, um, certainly like um, there is, uh, there is the, this, there's German efficiency for for a reason. And I think it, it starts very early, but it also, I think it depends on the, it's not like, you know, you can, you know, draw a conclusion and all of them are the same, but uh, exactly, no. I think exactly, to some extent, yeah. there, there is truth to what you guys are saying. Yeah, I'm just, you were myself. talking about the, uh, the foreign office, right? The Auslander Behode. Mm. At least this is the place where you were dealing with the international people, right? You were dealing with the migrants, foreign students. 
so they 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 can speak english but the problem is they don't want to you know sometimes you get frustrated but like i was a new student when i went to the auslander behode office and i was telling them my course doesn't require any german so i'm learning different language and i'm just here for the master degree right so at least but but she was uh, you know she she was she was resisting to speak in english so and then i i was like at least i'm trying to learn german but give me some time try to communicate in english right now and maybe next year i will be able to speak german a bit mm. <clears throat> so the thing is the office that are dealing with international people they should be more you know convenient about speaking different language you know they should be convenient about understanding other people so these are the things i think and now uh, now that i have been living here at least uh, i've been it's been a year so i kind of you know like adopting myself into german system like this is how they function the bureaucracy everyone is complaining even udoy also gets mm-hmm. get frustrated sometimes you can just send an email about your appointment or anything but no you have to wait for the later you know you got to check the mailbox every day <laughs> so yeah that's the thing but yeah sorry guys but uh, then again uh, like some of the things you know like we just didn't ex- uh, like experience before so it's like a new thing for us and we think like we cannot accept this but maybe some of the things actually are really normal for them but they don't see our point of view you know like maybe bringing a uh, translator in a auslander behold office it's like a normal thing they have been doing it for years so i don't blame the whole effect of it because like Uh, a lot of my uh, colleagues are my friends right now and a lot of my uh, university mates are also my friends so uh, i do not want to like as shapi mentioned like make a stereotypical uh, like a statement <laughs> like yeah germans are all about efficiency and nothing else but yeah i ha- i do have some fun loving friends so <laughs> yeah just to state that Fine. Yeah, yeah that's good to hear that's a, that's a good counterbalance but there are certainly this type of germans you know i get to see them also on a, on a, on a, on a daily basis and know exactly what you're talking about shafi mm-hmm. i mean you've been you've been in my place during christmas i hope my relatives are like an exception to some extent <laughs> yeah no bro i mean the, i mean the thing is that it's all about context as well right i mean uh, also which area i think the areas they live in are more you know conservative or a bit more co- comparatively rural areas Mm-hmm. um but then the place where your home is is a very liberal place right in general like people are open and your parents were already in a or your relatives were already in a mood to interact there it was christmas so they were already this is the holiday of the year so they were in in a very festival mood and then you know, they saw me i'm your friend so they welcomed me as your so it's like it's a very different context so you of course your family and i mean mm-hmm. as much as i as much as i appreciate it as much as 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 great fun as i had it's still like a very different context right so if you yeah. if i was dealing with german bureaucracy i would probably have a That similar a similar yeah. opinion but the, i think i think what you need to sort of point here is that i think anywhere as a foreigner as a migrant worker it's sort of difficult i think if you just think of bangladesh i think if you just talk to my you know migrants who've recently migrated to bangladesh i'm sure they will talk about the same problems that we are facing in germany i don't think it's necessarily a specifically german issue or it's specifically a french issue i think it's generally just that the world is not as integrated as we our generation would want it to be you know like that's the sad reality of it mm-hmm. um but i mean my op- my my question to you mo is that to what extent do you think the german uh, stereotype is true what how is a german person different from a french person in general without stereotyping like what do you <laughs> or, or like from from the rest of the europeans how would you say it in a way i know you're in the german government now so you have to be very politically <laughs> correct but but well, that's okay you know just just whatever you think <laughs> Uh, that's a good question like since we're tape like i think i would get a structure a little more diplomatic uh, <laughs> otherwise i would have like a certain idea what distinguishes us but like then again we like to see ourselves as europeans somehow even though we're like so different in terms of like member states and but like to 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 come back and i will answer your question shafi not me and i don't mean to distract <laughs> from from it or divert by any by any by any means but i think it has become also more difficult to you know acquire, like acquire a residence permit here in germany ever since 2015 you know they, they were really harmless bringing all the 
the immigration laws and you know the you know, it was like the requisite it, it or the you know the the conditions it takes for you to qualify and like sometimes you know the the student visa was perceived as a fast track to get german residents who were not leaving the country mm. so there was a huge debate you know surrounding surrounding these issues so sometimes you know they are like really really just suspicious and um and actually, like what Armand has just told me, like, you know, they refuse to talk like in, in English. And even though it doesn't require to speak German, I mean, uh, I mean, first of all, it's a very tedious language to learn. It's super tough. And it, it's like, a, you know, um, you will be struggling very much within two years. And if the, even though he doesn't really necessarily need it, they'll expect him to talk German. It's like, it's, uh, yeah, they always expect that to, to, to integrate. But I can tell from what experience you, you've been making, you know, you travel like flicks around the country. Aman, I've been following your Instagram stories. I mean, you guys are going to like student gatherings. So I can see you guys. I, I, I just, I just came well. from Hamburg. I was in Uda's place like, this weekend. I just, I just got back from Hamburg. Yeah. And uh, Hamburg is a city like where I get to speak English. I, I, lots of people are speaking English. I get, this is because of the migration flow and also the internationalization it could be. And I also went to Bayern, but Bayern has a different scenario. You know, in Germany, the interesting thing, every state has a different, different characteristic. If you go to another state, you can't uh, compare, comp- you know, like compare with your own state. It's a totally different, their their culture, their gesture, their exposure, everything is different. But uh, at the end of the day, uh, what I want to say, I respect German people and German system. You know why? Even though it's the bureaucracy system is pretty messed up, you know, due to the language barrier and the culture barrier, but somehow they're doing it. Somehow they're, you know, it's it's running. Uh, maybe it had to do with uh, they go. They took a lot of refugees from the war torn areas, right, in the last couple of years. So mm-hmm. they they didn't want to 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 compromise compromise the situation mm-hmm. with migrants. So I think they imposed this kind of thing that you have to learn the language, you have to adopt the system. Otherwise, it's very hard for them to integrate into the new society. So this is the reason they... So yeah, I'm not even a role model. Like I was not, I was not really teaching my friends German either. Like I mean, I was also studying international program. I was the worst. I took some of their exams. I mean, I can say that here, but since like thanks to digitalization and an online exam. But then again, I was I was the worst. Like I was never learned like a, like a proper German grammar. I couldn't necessarily understand because we have like free articles you know like french yeah. pieces too so you can distinguish yeah. that it's like a funny difference which we have um compared to the french but uh no i just want to give you guys credit you know you seem to to be coping fairly well i mean you, you travel around you mingle with germans you go to christmas markets you make an effort so i don't know what else you know one could be expecting from you, you guys like you know perform fairly well i assume university so yeah i, I, I just love the apple buns that. in the christmas market this is like the best drink in Germany for me. <laughs> and I, I really like how uh, like Germany organized the Christmas markets, actually. Like this is a, something like I think it can distinguish from other European countries. Like uh, in the Christmas markets, I can see like every city or every area has their own cultural or historical representation in that market. So I can compare this with the uh, like... Bengali New Year, uh, like uh, we have like a market, like Boishaki uh, Mela Jeta So, uh, mm-hmm. so it's like a Christmas market, but for uh, Bengali New Year. So New Year. I can like really have the like feeling like uh, that Germans like you know uh, express themselves very well with this Christmas markets. Like uh, I have been to a Christmas market in Sigburg uh, nearby Bonn. Mm-hmm. So uh, there was like a midi- medieval Christmas market. So they were like uh, showing uh, about their history and like how their kings, queens were and they were singing medieval songs. So this made me feel like something like it made, like took me to a different time. So this is something That's I cool. really admire about Germany, actually. Yeah. I think Germany did very well in sort of preserving its heritage yeah, was, and, analyzing, its and its culture. Uh, analyzing their festival system, like in during the summertime, the summer festivals is totally unique if you compare to the rest of the world, even in the Christmas. You know, they're kind of giving the traditional test to their younger generation. You know, this is the best way to keep your tradition, your culture, and, you know, represent it to the new, new generation. This is something that Germany is doing very good, you know. 
But is it working? I like more? the way you guys are celebrating. <laughs> Yet you could allow more foreigners in, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but is it is it working more? Like the traditional German culture, is it is it uh, they're trying to get people younger people in touch with it? Is it are younger people interested in keeping it alive, or are they more modern and more Western in that sense, like more I mean, Americanized? If you, if you ask me, I was always very very traditional, but very close as a tour guide to increase my tips that I got from American tourists. So. <laughs> so <laughs> so you're, so, so you pretended to be very traditional with American tourists. So that yeah, you, you, to... you bet, you bet. And I was organizing like Oktoberfest in Myanmar back in Yangon. So there, so there is also that. Oh, so nice. there got to be a, a certain sense of, of, of like local patriotism, which is which is actually much stronger in my state since I'm from Bavaria. And I mean, sometimes I think, especially when you're like abroad, you would sometimes equate Germany to Bavaria because of, you know, like this jug of beers, Oktoberfest and surrounding all that. But I think it also like for the sake of, of completeness and clarity, also, like speak about this Christmas markets and like the summer festivals and whatnot is also heavily commercialized. I mean, like you know, you you use tradition as a means to uh, to just go commercialize it a lot. Mm. And this this is what I've been seeing in like the recent years. And I've been I, I like two visitors this uh, this weekend, and we did kind of like a Christmas market hopping because Berlin also has a few very beautiful ones in like front of like old castles and a very yeah. nice scenery. And it's just, uh, I mean, I got it, inflation and difficult times, but it's just ridiculously expensive. And uh, But yeah, as you say, and I think this goes back to the point before, where you see like a little clash of generations, you know, same on like the ones that are working in foreign office um, versus the, the young Germans that are like more progressive, more liberal. And I think it's just like a, a generational clash. And I don't know about like how it like turns out, for instance, in, in Bangladesh, for instance, but we do have this this divide like you know we call like like you know the boomer debate and whatnot and the alman there's a couple of cool instagram pages and it shouldn't sound like lofty or anything but yeah we try to reconcile the traditional parts and we do enjoy it but mm -hmm. i'm not like someone and i'm not you know i'm living in berlin right now and even though when i was abroad it's not like that you know i'm like proud to be Bavarian or proud to be German even though mm. you know you're proud of like certain accomplishments in your country which is also like difficult to say as a German you know like our legacy yeah. is by far like <laughs> not not anything it has everything to... <laughs> it had a little bit of everything that's true and like, like all the goods and all the bad <laughs> actually you're born and brought up in a very traditional state right Bayern is kind of famous for the tradition and also the Oktoberfest you know I went to the Kulmbach beer festival so ah. I thought, I thought it's a small city and the beer festival will be just like a small program. Oh my God, that was the whole week program and people were dressing like the traditional dress <laughs> and they've been celebrating it and people are coming from the other state. It was one of the biggest festival in, in Bayern. I, I, then I Googled it, like the beer festival, uh, they, people take it very seriously, you know, they, they take it very emotionally, I think. I think because of the, just because of the alcohol or, <laughs> I don't know, because of the alcohol or just having fun. Yeah, it's like for, I heard like for uh, Oktoberfest, people actually go there for three or four days. They you know, camp there uh, in a tent and like they just like enjoy their time. And like I'm really interested maybe next year <laughs> I would go. Yeah, there. you guys, you know, you can always crash. It's not just Safi who I would, uh, who would extend the offer to stay at my place back home, but also, right. of course, you guys and whoever whoever's listening to this podcast. Oh, Isn't, how, how is it saying like Titi Devo Baba or something? At least, like, I think it's Hindi, but I don't know if it's the same. <laughs> <laughs> don't audience. give open invitation. No, 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 no. Oh, oh man, we, <laughs> <social media laughs> is be... <laughs> we we take our invitations very seriously, and uh, we, okay. we, we if you, and our audience is a very enthusiastic audience about so this podcast. So if you if you give them invitation, you're gonna get a lot of Facebook messages soon asking if if people oh. can come over. So just <laughs> I'm I don't really use Facebook anymore, so that's idle. Just like it's nothing personal, but I won't respond, guys. So it's like, <laughs> you can keep find me on Instagram though. Yeah, I think that most importantly. But Chuffy, like, probably. what's the what's the situation like in Paris? How does it like? What was the process for you to get like a residence permit? Like, was it the same? Was it difficult? Could you? that fight for an online appointment did you also have to show up in person present your documents you know have like kind of like an interview situation with them if you may ask I, I didn't have an interview situation with them so far because uh you know i could the first time i could just uh, apply online and then i could i had to show up 
face to face with some documents um but then it was like it wasn't an interview and this is like they just asked one or two questions but that's pretty much it i think for for france because france has a lot of international students or has been having a lot of international students they're they're much more accustomed to dealing with international student applications compared to france uh, compared to germany so for me that particularly wasn't a problem but anything beyond once you're done as a student anything beyond after that then it's it's it can be complicated um in the sense like you have to apply online and then you have to get an appointment and then you have to go physically and then you have to submit all the documents and then they will check what's not available or what's available and they will ask you to you know send or either come it depends on the mood they will ask you like sorry we can't process your application so you have to go back and then come back with the proper documents and going back and coming back with the proper documents would probably take two or three months because it's really hard to get an appointment in the police station or the immigration office so i think in general like it's the rules are st straightforward but then the thing is it's straightforward for me because i I'm well educated and I do the research. I think for most people, it for like for someone who probably doesn't have the same education levels or doesn't have the same skills, wouldn't be able to like it does take a lot of cognitive effort. You know, it takes you need to strategize. You need to, you need to, it's like it's playing, it's like a game. You need to play with the with the with the you know immigration in the sense like you know what do I, because they're not a very efficient system. So how do you get the best out of it despite them being inefficient you know how do you try to you know play by their rules but at the same time get the best out of it it's like you have to constantly think and think and think and strategize and you always have to be on your toes you know that's the that's the only issue hmm. wow it's an effort like finding the niche but then again strategic thinking now you consult the wealth program so... <laughs> Yeah, sure. And you have to think strategically also at UM how to get these recommendations that are from the professors. So my boy Shafi, he did what it takes. I did yeah. what I Even did. I think yeah. UM was a good experience, right? The, we, we, we learned how to deal with the system, you know, yeah. how to get the best out of the system. So that's how we learned, you know, we've been living in a group <laughs> for a long time. So you kind of know how to deal with the system. And yeah. Do you remember, Arman, we had a, we had a dictator in the social science office. Yeah, <laughs> this, there was a guy. <laughs> there was this one guy. And he was a secretary level, but you know he sort of he was the only one who could speak English or was comfortable speaking mm -hmm. with students and international students. So he was sort of, you know, always served as a gatekeeper mm -hmm. to anything, to a gatekeeper between this international students or students in general accessing the services of the faculty of social sciences because he, in, any request that students would have to make, they would have to go through him, right? And he loved being that gatekeeper because it gave him a lot of leverage with students. So what it allowed him to sort of, you know, exploit the students in many ways in the sense like he would, he had the, he had his. <laughs> so oh, he, <laughs> shit, where does this go? <laughs> <laughs> Is this so no, no, sex, no, 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 inappropriate or sexual exploitation. I hope, as far as I know, okay. but it's more like <laughs> there was this. I don't. Do you remember there was this student club that was a student club, but then all they did was, yeah, like they were being like just I don't know. They would they would just club. organ they would just organize events for the for the uh, for the faculty. So basically, you get students to do your. To, to provide free labor but then the events are for for the faculty for teachers for professors but in, in terms of not like you know doing any providing any professional growth for these people so it's just it's it's funny like the point of the story is like you know how there are complicated systems that are put in place and you know sometimes complicated systems are very hard to modernize but sometimes they're they're made complicated or they're kept complicated on purpose so that certain people can benefit off of it and they don't have an incentive to modernize it. So, the, so our, you know, so in this case, because the person was able to block all access of services to students directly, he could, he, he became a middleman where he would, you know, he would basically exploit the students in many, many ways. I would say he was just an uh, you know, attention seeker, you know. Yeah, he was just oh, yeah. a general just <laughs> an attention seeker. <laughs> just like, uh, I mean, he could have just uh, done all the things easily, but he would always go on the other way, you know, like so that you have to request him for a small things, for a small later from the faculty, you know. You have to, like, sometimes you have to make a very formal request to him, you know, you have to lobby for that shit. So this sort of things. But I, I have to say that I have learned a lot of things rather than academic, you know, by dealing with this faculty member, by dealing with this faculty individuals, 
I have learned a lot of things from the from from <laughs> University of Malaya. I have to say, and we I were think well it was a good experience, you. you know, meeting with you guys in Kuala Lumpur, and we explored uh, like the we. I, I think we had our best time in our life. I, I have to say, do you, Maurice, do you remember last time? We were dropping you at the airport and you were kind of, oh. <laughs> you seemed kind of afraid of, you know, like exploring new road. <laughs> with, shall we do that? <laughs> <laughs> you were with uh, Anne, I think, right? You were with your girlfriend. Oh my yeah. God. He was so nervous. Like I was driving and it was a completely dark road and you guys were nervous. We were nervous. I was, I was nervous. Everyone. Everything, right? Yeah, because my boys, they, they didn't want to pay taxes. Or what was it? Like, like, uh, like, oh, toll. Toll, toll station. Toll, like yes, toll, yes. Yeah. I was like, you just took like a different like turn. I was, I was just afraid to not catch the flight. I mean, I'd love at some point. I'd love. I would have loved it like to continue my stay in Malaysia for some time. But, but thanks for yeah. the for the pick up and drop off. And also, I think you brought some flowers because I think you come from like some gala dinner or something. I remember you guys had like a couple of flowers, which I should have given to my girlfriend back then. But then these guys, they. Man, we stole your we stole your glamour. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't remember bringing any flowers or whatever. Maybe Arman. This sounds like something Arman would do. Yeah, but. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like, no, that was if, 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 maybe that was a good you know like to saying you goodbye by giving you something you know yeah. at least I I, I I had the <laughs> and you opted for the flowers. That, I had the mind to bring something at least <laughs> rather than. <laughs> Coming with empty hands like Shafi. <laughs> <laughs> Shafi was at least driving though. I, I was the one that. who was driving. I was the one who booked everything. No, but I think you were just afraid of missing your flight, bro. Probably. Yeah. I was yeah. not afraid of like, you know, these dark roads. They were passing by Pudra Jaya. No, 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 no. Yeah. I mean, I was thinking question. like, I have been living in this country. How come I don't know this road? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah it's my country. Plenty of roads to, to go to the airport. You know, they have huge infrastructure in. Yeah communication so yeah so let's talk a... about something else let's talk about football that you wanted to talk about oh there was yeah, an issue yeah, let's question, start right? with an update right now when we are uh recording this podcast spain and germany uh had a draw so the final score is one and one and so that means there is still chance for germany to go to the next round which is very good but why uh are you not updated with this mo why are you not watching football <laughs> So as long as this doesn't get into a conversation, whether I boycott the situation, like talk about you, I don't know why you, why you guys want to, you know, like, like push me in what kind of like corner, but I, I don't know. It's just because I've been out like all day and I'd like to visit us here during the weekend with like a pretty like tight schedule. We'd see a lot of things in Berlin. I don't actually know. Like it's, I mean, from in my perception perspective, like the, the World Cup, I wasn't really... I wasn't mentally prepared. I mean, we had the European Championship already last year, so it felt like it's like too inflationary. All these like football, football events, and uh, mm. um, I mean, I would watch it still. Um, just didn't like today. I didn't really feel it, and I didn't really have the temptation to watch. And I mean, that goes back to me saying I'm not like a super patriotic. I mean, I watched uh, the European Championships last year. I was even in Paris for that matter, Shafi. I think we watched the England Germany game. Um, where Germany, like they, yeah, this is this is World Cup, Mo, right? Huh? This is something. This is World Cup, so this is something not every day happens, right? It's, it's true, true. It happens every four years. So yeah, but... Germany, as a is a crazy football nation. <laughs> how how you are oh. resisting yourself by not watching that? I think Mo is more like a tennis fan more than a football fan. Also, uh, football doesn't really make a big that's... difference. For him. Very, Even very you know, true. I met another German guy last night. There was an emergency, so we had to call the ambulance. And I met another guy. So I was asking him, "Aren't you watching football matches?" Like, I'm not a fan of soccer. And I was like, <laughs> "What is going on?" No, I mean, I was still watching. I just don't know why today. I think it's like it's like the, the, the public debate in Germany is really. I mean, just conceding that you're watching the World Cup, like they will put you like, like they will have like higher, like say like moral values. They would look down sure. on you in a way. So right now, the, the, it's it's a really toxic situation, I may say, in Germany. So you can't like publicly say that you're gonna watch the World Cup. I mean, you can still say that, right? Like, don't get me wrong, but it's like sometimes perceived and conceived a little, not like disgrace almost. I don't know how you guys experience that in your friendship circles. I mean, you must have had this conversation with like dozens of Germans since you're integrating so well, which I was loading you guys for. So, um, yeah, but I'm like, it's just like, 
I don't know, it's the first like World Cup, I think, in winter, so it doesn't really feel like it is. And you know, my mm. boy, boy, just a hard worker. No, no time for watching World Cup. So. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure, bro. No, but I didn't know. I thought, I thought no one. In, I think I thought it was just the media sort of, you know, making a big deal. I didn't know people were actually in Europe or in Germany actually boycotting the World Cup. I didn't. I didn't. No, I, I know some people pro. who are actually boycotting the World Cup, and like a few days ago, like uh, in my office, I had like a meeting with my colleagues, and so all of a sudden, like my team lead asked everyone, like, "Do you guys think it's right to watch the World Cup?" So, like, most of them answered, like, "No, I think it's we should boycott it." And I was like in peer pressure, and I said, "Okay, yeah, we should boycott it." But <laughs> yeah. even though I'm, I'm also not watching it, <laughs> watching it every day, but yeah. Uh, it's the peer pressure for me no but i think yeah maybe in the berlin circles then i guess there's a big public debate as whether we should watch it or not but then i mm-hmm. so that's one of the reasons why you didn't have an incentive to watch it as much or like you're you're not or what like it's not the same it's not the same as previous world cups that's what you're saying exactly but it's not like a matter of like winter versus summer maybe it is to some extent i don't know like this whole build up to the to the world cup and i mean like qatar has every right to have host like a world cup as like as an arab nation the same as like the i don't know when 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 you think about like you know the distribution of uh, like political systems around there is like a third democracy is a third hybrid regimes and a third is like authoritarian so uh, also like you look at the una like in the human rights council i mean you also have countries that don't necessarily like qualify for like high human rights standards and yet you know they they can set the agenda for instance so mm. i don't know i will watch the last game of football like certainly and i mean i had like a live score here thanks to Aman Uday. so there's that so thanks guys for <laughs> you know keep me updated and enlightened um yeah but the it's 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 a it's a, it's a good question but i feel like the like public polls, the majority here of Germans don't necessarily watch it, and you know they always um, claim like the, the the detrimental working like labor rights in Qatar. And I mean, what what I what I would want to know is also because since you're like from Bangladesh, and you know they have like so you must have been following like the media debate. And since I you know like there's also like a lot of Bangladeshis, Nepali, Pakistanis, especially working like in in Arab states. Like how is it how was it reported back home? I mean. Like it's the, bad. The, it's really bad. Like uh, I heard about a lot of people were actually like killed or died by accident uh, in this World Cup uh, preparation of the stadiums in the middle of deserts. And and they actually officially reported only three deaths, but it was like more than thousands unofficially. So that was something like uh, really uh, like not acceptable. And like I can share a like really uh, raw story with you guys, like how uh, like these people are exploited in these Arab countries. Like a few days ago, uh, like uh, there is like a, a p- person I know whose wife actually went to a Saudi Arabia country, uh, Saudi Arabia city, and like uh, she was like working as a housemaid uh, there, and she was like. Um, tortured regularly uh, and uh, she uh, went to a point like she had uh, she got pregnant and they just sent her back home and with like this kind of uh, like exploitation or torture also happened in these Arab countries like they have no human rights laws I I can like confirm because I talked to like someone personally uh, about it so this actually happens and uh, the human rights issue uh, about boycotting the World Cup, I think it's uh, justifiable. And uh, to some extent, uh, yeah, they bribed uh, the FIFA. Even there is a Netflix <laughs> documentary about it. And so, like, I don't know, like, uh, yeah, if you talk about this issue particularly, uh, we have all the right to boycott this World Cup. Yeah. What do you guys think? Was this product placement, by the way, since you recommended Netflix? Is that allowed on this podcast? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we are, we will. <laughs> we are a we are a censorship free podcast, bro. No worries. Ah, sweet. That's why it's sweet. called OG. <laughs> <laughs> nice, genuine voice. Like also, that's a very right? genuine podcast. You don't take money or funding from like undisclosed sources, no. No, no, no. Only from the big tobacco company. Keep smoking. <laughs> yeah. Keep smoking, kids. <laughs> 
Cancer oh, is a myth. Okay. <laughs> I would, I would, I would, I would have assumed you guys are going for the philanthropy, like the, the the big ones, like the Gates and all that. No, they don't pay shit. Right. <laughs> 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 gotta stay afloat, guys. Hard time yeah. sitting in Germany, winter and all that. So I get it. And smoking yeah, has always been cool. I mean, let's face it. I mean, I, I love smoking shisha. If only. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. Uh, you smoked a lot of shisha when you were in when you were in Malaysia. I mean, you guys are crazy fan of shisha everywhere. Morris was like, "Let's go for shisha." Yeah, you were for shisha. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, you an Arab or what? <laughs> so you're Famous. accusing me of being addicted, huh? <laughs> yeah, you 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 were like all, almost Eastern in that way. Like you know, like you would go to a random shisha place and it's just full of Middle Eastern people, and then you sh- you're there like <laughs> just chilling. <laughs> trying to like you know fit in like a cultural, in. Cultural, cultural appropriation that's what i did i was like this yeah. was my privilege boy coming to malaysia yeah no i think like for the um the issue on boycotting it's it's funny because it's very well documented that a lot of bangladeshi workers are mistreated a lot of them died because of the preparations for the world cup some of them you know were you know whatever and they were mistreated and you know some of them were sent back you know no rights whatever but despite that first of all there's no there's no backup or like there's no concerted effort by the government of bangladesh to do something about it because we don't want to or they don't want to ruin the big market that qatar is for the export of being bangladeshi labor so that's something that didn't so it, they did it at the cost of not protecting the workers in any way and second of all, for some reason, like Bangladesh is, you know, we, we, th- there's not a big debate in Bangladesh around it, like whether we should boycott the World Cup or not, because I think the World Cup is such a big event. It's actually such a, you know, integral part of our society. I think I will send you a video on Instagram, by the way, more like it's just mm-hmm. like the streets of Dhaka are painted in graffiti of Brazil, of Argentina. These are the two main football clubs we support even germany like a lot of supporters have, and then yeah, yeah, people are yeah. actually putting german argentine brazilian flags in their apartments you know it's it's a it's a it's a very culturally <laughs> you would get confused if you were in dhaka like what country yeah. am i <laughs> yeah. be starting to watch the world cup finally so like there's more, <laughs> yeah. there are more supporters than i could ever consider myself so thanks, exactly right. thanks so out a... there keep supporting <laughs> And smoking. It's, it's a very culturally relevant uh, <laughs> event for us. I think people they really enjoy the World Cup, and I think that I don't think they even considered boycotting it at one point, mm-hmm. you know, because they're just such a big fan of it, right? So good mm-hmm. for the society. Yeah, I mean, I, I, this is also my impression. Also, now whenever I went back to Asia, I want to like you know not throw like Bangladesh in the same part as like all the other South Asian countries, South Asian countries. But like football was always crazy there. I remember I had like this debate with like a Messi, Ronaldo, and like everyone watch, was watching Premier League there. So all bars. I, I felt like there was a huge, huge um, admiration for like World Cup or football. Just too bad that we, we didn't like witness the World Cup back in Malaysia. I think it could have been much fun like watching with you guys. Would have been a, yeah, for sure, bro. Would have been a big, yeah, really but then what? what's your... um? What has... What has Germany like? You know, what is the official government policy of Germany about this World Cup? Is it has it said anything out loud about the human rights or not so much? I mean, our interior minister, like she went to Qatar like recently, and she was wearing like an armband saying "One Love." I mean, the German national team, like they were, I think there was like a FIFA intervention, so they weren't allowed to to wear like this this armband or like bandana, whatever it is. Oh, yeah. And um, yeah, so like they were shunning away from FIFA because they were, you know, FIFA was. Um, like, like, it wouldn't necessarily like me. It could have been call it threatening, you know. Like, their captain gets a yellow card. I'm sure you guys follow the, follow the debate, but I mean, the public outcry was was huge, you know. Um, that's like, you know, you should, you guys should, um, yeah, you know, you should, you should, you should stand up to your values and you should be like more daring. And it would have been such an easy way to, you know, to, 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 to. You know, present a symbol on the on the world stage, and it was really considered like a very weak statement. But mm-hmm. o- official government, because I think it's such a sensitive issue right now. I mean, Germany is always like, you know, I think I read like a government document recently, but I don't know which ministry it has been. But it was like, yeah, we would want to support Qatar in their effort to improve labor labor rights, essentially. You know, all all that. So it's like a little like non saying but it's also you know like a diplomatic finesse um it's kind of like you know language like very generic um but other than that there was like no 
no government policy. But I think they wouldn't mind if Germany would do better than they're doing right now in terms of like results. Right. <laughs> Certainly. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> Let's see what, what the outcome is going to be. Uh, Let's see. Germany, Germany is buying a huge amount of natural gas and oil from Qatar. So <laughs> Germany, I shared in, uh, a meme in, on the Instagram. I don't know if you guys have seen it or not. <laughs> from Berlin's Auslander, Berlin Auslander behold or something like that. <laughs> that Qatar is buying gas from um, when uh, when Germany is buying gas from Qatar, there is a different face, and when Germany is playing soccer in Qatar, there is a different uh, attitude. So, uh, I, don't you Good think point. it's more political this term human rights when Western countries are accusing or using? Uh, it's more political than than practical or relevant issues. What do you think? These are like, really having we, debates, guys, for 11 p.m. on a Sunday. Yeah, I mean, but... you <laughs> have agreed to play <laughs> in the tournament. You have sent exactly. your We're having business with this country, and then you were boycotting them. Or maybe maybe, maybe because <laughs> Germany has less chance to <laughs> win this World Cup. I don't know. I'm just joking. It was the last I... time Germany also couldn't uh, cross the uh, first round, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm hoping, like, uh, they will go to the knockout stages also, so that, like, we could celebrate here in Germany about it. I'm really excited about it. But thank you very much, Mo, for joining us today. And oh. I wouldn't keep you long because, like, yeah. Ah, yeah, come on, no, guys. Like... for all of us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's 11 p.m. Much. and we all have work tomorrow. Yeah, so yeah. Let's... <laughs> let's... So we shall not keep you long. <laughs> no, guys. Like, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, like, for, you know, for having me today. And I'm, like, sorry my camera quality wasn't the best because I couldn't really oh, use nice. my proper laptop. Like, some of the, the camera didn't really work. But, yeah, it was really good Good seeing you. And I'm sorry we could, like, you know, talk in depth about, uh, about like, the human rights situation and whatnot. I'm glad to also engage in a more non, non-diplomatic <laughs> way. Discussion. 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 Exactly. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> and Maurice, what's your plan about Christmas? Are you going back to Passau, your home state, or you're going to celebrate in Berlin? No, most likely I'm going back home, exactly. I like see my family again. I mean, this year, as I have a vacancy, since my boy Shafi will have other plans. So I think you're going back to Bangladesh, right? In one or two yeah, weeks. I'm going back to my real family. If not, I would have definitely been been there with your family. And to all your fans in Bangladesh that like listen to this amazing podcast. Exactly, bro. Exactly. Yeah, bro. Uh, you can <laughs> tell them to subscribe to us. So that we can bring him over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a sec, there's a like a second episode, like part two, where you want to have more. Then I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm absolutely glad and uh, yeah, to to you know to to come out, come on stage again, basically. So and then we will talk a more filterless topic, you know, in the next episode. <laughs> it's just a, in a start again. Yeah, and less political topic, maybe. Then it's better yeah. for everyone. <laughs> Okay. So like, if you come to uh, North Rhine Westphalia, have you ever come to this state? Just let me know. You wanted to come to Bonn, then I don't know somehow. You yeah, said... yeah, no, no. But it was I was going. I was going. Uh, I was sick then, and then it was cancelled. Then like uh, someone, someone else went, and then I didn't have like digital participation. But uh... yeah, man, I'm, I've been living in Germany one year, and I haven't got the chance to meet with you. It's been yeah. I'm so sorry. It was my bad. Malaysia last time, right? <laughs> Yeah, I think to 19, when you sent me to the airport and gave me those flowers, I still appreciate it till this day. Uh, now that I remember the flowers, yeah. I didn't, I did not bring the flowers. That was from the previous renter, you know, we, we took a <laughs> so car. So they someone will... left the flowers into the, oh my into God. the car. <laughs> that was from the previous wow. uh, person, I think, who took the car. That was a so car. So it was a rented car, right? Uh, so he took like, he took someone out. A date or something and then like brought us some flowers i see i just that was used the uh, yeah I think, I think maybe the guy got dumped because why was the flower there right <laughs> could be moment of silence in this podcast for our <laughs> abang abang yeah speaking of it like anwar ibrahim last fully topic like he made it guys <laughs> yeah <think>. he did <laughs> he made it yeah, is, he, is he the president now like uh, what is the what prime minister anwar ibrahim wow yeah, good for him. <laughs> good for I was rooting for him like, from him, last yeah. election, actually. I didn't know. After 25 years, yeah, he finally made yeah, yeah. it. And there is Very another guy I want to see him, yeah. Prime Minister, uh, Jeremy Corbyn, the Labour Party. Mm. Uh, this oh, guy is also is like Anwar Ibrahim. Mean, he's been struggling for a long time to get into power, and then there is no what? luck, right? No. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah I remember time. us supporting those two back then, Jeremy <laughs> Corbyn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is out. He's never going to be prime minister anymore. He's he's out. 
I also think so. Maybe Keir Starmer at one point. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> but yeah, one day, one day, Adva Ibrahim will also be Sultan or something. It's a family line that is attached with this. Maybe he'll get know, married know. to a king. Oh, sorry, queen. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I might, I might want to like check out a car, buy some flowers, and then like take out like a sultan daughter or something in Malaysia next time. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, we should meet one time in, in 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 Europe at least. You know, like in Germany or France or anywhere. You guys, if you guys are just or in Berlin, since you are living in Berlin more. Yeah, and this is not an official invitation to all of like our listeners, but <laughs> <laughs> particularly, but exclusively to those three handsome boys in this call. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I'm also going back to Bangladesh in December, so hopefully next year we we can have a meet meet up with all of us, right? So thank I'm you for your you time. Well, sorry. I was just asking, like, yeah, thank you guys. I was like, Arman, what are your plans in the next week? So I've gonna... been living in Germany, so uh, I just got, you know, came back from Bangladesh and Nepal. I went to Kathmandu, I went mm-hmm. to Dhaka, so I had a good trip last month. So now that uh, I'm back, uh, I'm going to c- celebrate my Christmas here in Germany, most probably in Essen. If there is no one in, no one around. Uh, otherwise, I would go to France, you know, or Hamburg. <laughs> but Udo and Xavi both are living, so I will celebrate in Essen. Most probably, or I might go to Hungary. Um, I'm still oh. planning. I'm not sure. Okay. Well, ever if they drop by Passau or Berlin, just shoot me a message. Just give me a call and be like, "Hey, this is the KGB." Uh. <laughs> <laughs> just give me like a call. And I was like so confused. It's like, oh, I, 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 I took my new number and I called Maurice for for something. Maybe. I was, uh, uh, you know, I called you maybe for the public policy course, some, right? Yeah, 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 something, something. And like then that. he picked the call. I was like, I'm, I'm calling from KGV. And <laughs> and <I was laughs> what did you think about it? Uh, I mean, and that, what was your feeling that moment? I was shit scared because, like, the, the, the Russian invasion was like a couple of days before. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what the, the like, was in <laughs> <laughs> Too soon, bro. Too soon. So, yeah. I, was just, I was just messing with you, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was I was like happy to listen to your voice, of course, and just to say that just 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 call through whenever you you're nearby. Thanks, yeah. bro. So, so let's Guys, thank thanks you a lot in the discussion. Yeah, thank you, Morris, for coming here, and we really appreciate your time, and we really appreciate you coming here. Hopefully, yeah. we'll meet again really in real life conversation. and also in OG. Best, guys, trying to fit in in German society, all the struggle the German for an office. You, you, you're gonna get there. Trust yeah, me. I have an appointment next Trust week, me. so pray for me. <laughs> okay. See all you guys. Best, guys. Bye. See you. Bye. Cheers.